Why do I farm? I ask myself that every time I am out here about to fall out in the field. <laughs> no, I farm because I love it. I mean, I love, I'm obsessed with the fact that I can put a seed into some soil and it can be the tiniest little thing and it grows into a plant that's taller than me. I need to feed myself and my family. <laughs> So uh, farming is detrimental to that. Not only do I need to feed my family and feed myself, uh, we need to feed ourselves with the best of foods, right? My mother used to tell me stories all the time about growing up on a farm. Um, I was always fascinated. Like, I love the stories. I love when she, she tells a story about the farmhouse, the wraparound porch, and how everything they ate came from the farm. So if they had cornmeal, it was corn that they grew. If they had butter, it was butter from cream that they got from the cow that they had. Um, bacon, everything, eggs, like literally almost their whole breakfast will come from the work that Daddy Jimmy would put in. So. As a kid, that was like so cool to me. Like, oh my God, y'all can just go out. Cause you know, I grew up in Detroit, so I'm concrete everywhere. So for me, that was fascinating to, to hear her say that they literally just went outside and got what they needed to eat. Growing up, I, I couldn't stand farming. <laughs> um, I was out here trying to play, climb trees, you know, ride my go-kart or whatever, but you know, when it came to farming, I did not like it at all. So um, when I got older, um, I got an undergrad degree in animal science, um, grad school for can cancer biology. Um, you start to realize like the importance of growing your own food. I worked for places like Monsanto, um, I worked for a lot of other biotech companies um, and you realize uh, what you're getting in the stores um, is, is really per trash so you really want to you really want to grow your own food even if you're growing um, your food in your closet right um, even if you grow food on your balcony um, whatever you can grow your food you should grow it um, at least having the skills to say okay I can put a seed in the ground take care of it nurture it and feed yourself off of that. I mean, that in itself is like, I mean, <laughs> that's <is> huge. I think that the way we eat nowadays is a little different. We're so disconnected from our food and our food system. You go into a grocery store, you don't know where your greens come from. You don't know where your fruits and vegetables come from. And the fact that sometimes things have to travel thousands of miles from other countries to, to come to you. The, the biologist in me or the scientist in me can't help but to think that the food, the integrity of that food is not as good as it would be if you can just grow it yourself, harvest it, and you're eating it sometimes within a couple hours or a couple days. Everyone should turn to farming and self-sufficiency and create some kind of sustainable um, agriculture program. And that doesn't mean you have a large quantity, you don't have 10 and 15, 100 acres. You just need a little land space um, and you can feed your family. A 20 by 20 intensive gardening, you can feed a family of four with no problem. Um, if you get some uh, four or five chickens um, that are layers, you have eggs um, for your family as well. And I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but I would advise anyone and everyone, if you can grow, if you have a balcony, if you have a closet, a basement, um, a little land, your granddaddy's land, um, your cousin, all of that, just grow something, you know, and then collaborate. If you have um, three or four people who are working adults and you all obtain some type of um, 
income tax back at the end of the year, you put that money together, you purchase a half an acre, you purchase two acres, you buy any of those things like that, and you grow on it. And then you can create income for yourself and you can feed yourself and the community at large. So I would advise everyone, if you can control the food system, you pretty much control everybody. Yeah, when well, you're like extra purple, like I am, <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> most people, um, I'm gonna discriminate. I mean, that's it, that's real life though. People have their biases, number one. On top of their biases, they have those things that they've been taught. Um, and after those things are combined, um, you can't help but to feel a certain way in some cases against people um, like myself. So, um, People in this society are taught and raised to be that way. Um, they're raised to be prejudiced. They're raised to they're raised to be feel a certain way. So um, I don't let that stop me with doing anything I do. Um, I'm extremely aggressive in how I tackle situations. So um, yeah. Um, the struggles of the modern black farmer are the same as the black farmers in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing or not much has changed. Um, we are still underfunded. We still get um, last pick for like USDA uh, funding and grants. Uh, we had to apply like three times and then we had to, it wasn't until we met somebody that we knew and she was black. So she was like, why are y'all not getting this, this um, grant? And we're like, I don't know, like we're supposed to be the in the top bracket, like minority um, farmer, you know, new farmer kind of thing or black farmer. And, you know, the, the office kept on saying like, oh, sorry, y'all didn't get it. Sorry, y'all didn't get it. And she had to make a phone call. And all of a sudden, miraculously, we got it. So um, there's still racial biases. I think there's still um, roadblocks for black farmers like we don't have that generational farming going on like other predominantly white farmers have. They have like, oh, my grandfather has 100 acres. He has 500 acres. And, you know, I've worked with him. I've ridden on a tractor with him. They know their um, extension agent by first name and all this other stuff. We don't have that. So we literally have to do everything from the ground up ourselves, which is, that's a struggle. <laughs> that's for sure. Why do I think people question black farmers? Um, well, it's not only black farmers that are being questioned by people. As a black person, we are always uh, questioned, but if farmers especially, which I think they shouldn't be questioned because we are the one that they everybody learn from. We learn when we are the one that build this country with our farming and help produce everything produce the economy but uh, and, and like everything else we are not the ones that know they don't think we know everything but um, we are always the low end on the low end of the totem pole when it comes to getting government funding and everything from for farms and we have to work hard and use our own funds and get the lower less lesser off the government fund and funding so people question black farmers, in my opinion, because I don't think, I don't think there is enough of us. So it's almost like, really? Like, you know, you're farming and you're black? You're not working for somebody else? Um, I think they question our knowledge. Um, I think they question the quality. I think they question a lot of things. and. The reason is because we're not represented. They don't see enough of us there to have a prototype. So normally when you go to farmer's markets or when you're dealing with a farmer, you see like a white man, 
or um, a young hippie white couple and it's like oh you know look at them they're going back to the land you know they're gonna do their thing and because you do not see enough of us doing that same thing I think people are automatically leery I mean it is nothing for me to be at a market out there sweating and hot and I'm behind the table and I've seen it a number of times from both black people which burns me up as well as white people they will look from a distance at the table and they'll see what we have and the black people will just be like I can't make eye contact like they're literally doing everything looking all over the place to not make eye contact and all I want to do is speak and be like hey like I do to all people not just black people but they look and they become Stevie Wonder all of a sudden and then I look up and they're down there chatting it up laughing with the white farmer um, I don't know why that is. This is something that we're still trying to understand and it's the weirdest thing. And then a lot of older white people will look and they immediately see that we're black. Even when they see the stuff on the table and they're like, oh, I need some tomatoes. I've heard them say like I need and we have it on the table and it looks good. It's fresh. And they're like, I can't deal with that. Like, so I've seen them go without before they come and they purchase from us. So I think that the same racial biases that people have and the same stereotypes that people have, it carries over in every aspect, even with the, um, the pharma. Um, there is this weird stigma um, that black farmers are, you know, ignorant. Um, they don't know a lot or anything like that, but I beg to differ. All the farmers I know are extremely educated. Um, my grandfather knew how to grow things in the gutter um, of his house. Um, it was amazing to see how he grew things. Um, my pops can grow anything, anywhere, it doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, if you can feed yourself and you can back away from the system and take care of your family and educate your family, um, you're always gonna be a threat. In order for people to change their view of black farmers, it needs to be more of us, um, which, which is, you know, hard because it's a labor of love. Like you have to actually have a passion and have to like love doing it in order to do it. It's also expensive. People think that oh, I'm just going to go farm, but you know, you make a little bit of money for a lot of work, a lot of effort and a lot of, um, a lot of financial input. So if we can get more youth programs with, um, with um, our, um, our young black youth involved, because we need that, that, that generation up under us. We need to start a, like a uh, training process pretty much. Like they have a guide, they can see us doing it. They can see that we're making money doing it. And they can see that it is a, um, viable income. So in order for people to see a change, they need to see more of it. It needs to be like a, pretty much a flooding of the market. Uh, films like this will help to connect people with, you know, the lives and the ins and outs of black farmers. And I think uh, understanding too that pretty much our foundation as, as black people is in agriculture. Um, we fed the world you know, a couple hundred years ago, the world depended on us to feed them. So, um, but yeah, I think that just that more representation. Um, exposure, right? Um, a lot of people don't even um, conversate with black farmers. Um, they look at a lot of us and say, ah, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't understand certain things. So there's no reason to, to talk to them. They're uncomfortable, right? This is the reason why we can't go into um, Starbucks and sit down and wait. Um, they're uncomfortable with black people. Um, that's the reason why we can't have uh, barbecues or anything like that. So um, that, that needs to change. So to change that, people just need to be exposed. Actually come and sit down and talk and walk around with some black farmers, so. We need more black farmers that, in the, uh, we need more black farmers and more people in the White, in the white House. In the, we need to, be more conscious on these people we're putting into voting into our, um, local at local levels, national levels, and we need to uh, work together 
and try to uh, form more uh, alliances that's going to help us as a group of black farmers to make, our, um, make us count. Oh gosh, that's like my passion right there. Okay, sustainable living is like, it is a must because sustainability is, is what is gonna help our generations thrive down the line. Um, adopting practices that our ancestors or our um, grandfathers and grandmothers did, it allows us to Pass down skills such as canning, such as farming, such as um, growing your own medicines. Um, all of these things, that knowledge that you pass down, it helps on every single level. It helps the environment. It helps um, with you being able to provide for yourself. You're depend. You're not dependent on the system. Um, it gives you independence. Uh, you can just by teaching like what well, we want to teach our kids and we have them out farming they have a skill and with that skill set they can they don't if they don't want to farm they can always do consulting for farming i mean it's it's so it's such a um it's such an important such an important such an important thing to possess um if you're not sustainable you are because for me I've always had a passion in environmental science. So on just on a planetary level, then we, if we're not growing and we don't have sustainable growing practices, then we're actually hurting the area that we're growing in. We're actually hurting the, the earth that we're living on. So that's one aspect, um, sustainable living. If we are not living sustainably, we're wasting money. Um, if your heating, cooling, all of those things are not sustainable, then you're losing money. The other things that come along with that is pretty much for us um, living off grid for since September, it makes you think and it does make you think about what's important, what is necessary, what is not, wants and needs. So I think that everybody needs to adopt a more sustainable model, but it should be on their comfort level. Um, I think they should do at the very minimum just stuff that will help our environment so that we can leave it better for the next generation. And yeah. um, I think it's important for us health-wise, uh, phys mentally, physically, and emotionally because once, um, like I said, when I grew up on the farm, we, were, we, we didn't have all these health problems we have now. We ate uh, everything that we produced. We worked out every day by getting out in the farm, on the farm, um, uh, that, that was our physical exercise. And then being healthy, we ate everything that we grew because we knew what we were eating. We, was, we weren't eating all these chemicals and mass-produced uh, food that we're eating now. And, and, emo and emotionally, it was just uh, relaxing. And it was just, uh, it was just pleasant to be, you didn't have all this stress and the hustle and bustle of getting up, going to corporate jobs and trying to please everybody. We were just doing things as, uh, to make a living and, and as a family unity. For some reason, we still tend to look at farm work as, I'm not touching that, I'm not doing that. But it's not about that. It's about providing a better quality of life for you and your family. So even on, even if you don't want to farm full time, every single individual needs to know how to grow food. You should not be so dependent on a system to feed you that if there's a blackout and everything shuts down, that you don't know what to do with yourself. So even if you don't even utilize it, even if you just know, just know how to grow food and that'll be enough. Why do you farm? The reason why I farm is because people at the farm, 
at stores and things, those things have very bad stuff that you cannot eat. Like if you buy vegetables in a, from the farm, they have like, like you know, different pro, different processing things in it. And it's really not good. And pesticides, yes, that's a word. Pesticides are in there and you don't know it. And once you eat it, oh, the, the pesticide does not wash off. So it just goes in, it goes in your stomach and can cause very bad diseases. How does farming create a better quality of life? Farming can teach people how to live. Like back before all of us were even born, there used to be farmers everywhere and we did the farm and we knew how to grow our own food. But once all this like, you know, mechanical and tech came up, we stopped for some reason. And I think that if we farm, we, we could still be on the, you know, phones and tablets, but if we farm, we could educate ourselves and still know how to protect ourselves. What lessons has farming taught you? Lessons have farm, that um, farming told me, taught me is that well, number one, farming's hard, very hard, but it also can help you get, it's a better way of life. So going to the store costs a lot of money and vegetables behind us, they, that, my mother and my father says, that's money. Like, if somebody tried to accidentally try to mess it up, it's money. But it helps you give a better way of life and you don't have to go to the store buying stuff and you don't have to go to the store with a um, you know basket full of food you could always have the food right here you could still go to the store but it's still right there what are the struggles of farming the struggles of farming um, are one try not to get messy number two is lifting like lifting and harvesting for um for people like my dad, he's a, he's not that old, but he's had a when he bends down, he used to have knee pads and that. But it's really good exercise; it makes you strong. So, how do you feel selling your food at the market? Selling my food at the market is really exciting. Um, when I see when we go to the market every time, I'm like, oh, I, I can't wait people to just come buy out. But yesterday I learned at the market that people can't just, just come out and be like, hey, let me buy something. They they gotta see what it is, if they're allergic to it or something like that. You can't just like go out there and say, hey, I'm gonna sell. You're gonna need to like prop, grow, and you know, have the money to do it and you'll fly. So do you plan to continue farming once you get older and become an adult? Yes, I want to continue farming for generations well, on this same farm in this exact spot. Um, if I have kids, I want to teach them the qualities of farming. People can't, don't have to farm, like I said. You just got to know how to take care of yourself. What's your favorite farm animal? My favorite farm animal is horses. Why do you like horses? Because I can feed them and give them water and What do you like about being on a farm? <laughs> you don't like farming? I do like farming. But you don't like being on the farm? Yeah, I do like being on a farm, but sometimes. Sometimes? Daddy swallowed the cow, so I felt a little upset. And he smelled like cow. 